Hello, today I'm working through how to create this simple calendar interface in any project basically. Um, this is a project I'm currently working on. It's a legal platform and uh, I'm working through how I created the calendar section basically. So yes, join me on this great little adventure. So um, this is a legal platform. So um, it's a law firm platform and I'm basically working you to how to design the calendar feature of basically any application so like just just a calendar um, calendar basically and so um, this section I'm, des I'm designing the section that allows you to choose which team uh, you belong to so assuming um, the team is called the legal team uh, basically it's taking um, how that looks like basically so what you see me doing is searching for the um, icon reading the icon pack that I added to the project um, yeah so you see me um, trying to align things um, I'll make I mean, I'll make uh, improvements as we go along and so um, this basically is me what going through the project uh, so I'll mention uh, when it gets to pass what I'm talking about so currently what I'm doing is working on the tabs um, so the dashboard, uh, basically the selectors for each tab, basically. Um, so that's what I'm doing. This is just for the icon for dashboard. Uh, you see me create variants for that particular dashboard. Um, yeah. Um, so I'd create the active state and then the default state. So you see me create variants, um, creating um, a variant property. Um, yeah. Um, the ship speed. <laughs> yeah, so I've created a variance property and I'll be setting one to the default and one to be the to be the active states. Um in actual product work you'd have to create whole states as well. Um so I'm now creating um using the variant selecting different icons for the different tabs for the um site navigation basically. So yeah. Um, so you see me adding um, cases um, billing section as well um, you see calendar so I change the icon to match that and then mind you design is an iterative process and so I'll come back to make improvements to each individual section uh, I, I know it seems like I'm I'm actually it's not straight science I've already designed this platform so <laughs> I'm referencing from somewhere so just so you know it's not like a straight science where you are able to um, get it all at once I know if you're if you're starting out this might be daunting um, but keep in mind that I already spent time on this to make sure when I'm designing I can design everything in one take and so um, just keep watching um, yeah so now you see me working on the actual side um, the actual interface that the user are working on so what I'm currently working on is the search feature that allows you to perform a global search on the system basically and so um, you see me creating an auto layout for the search um, and trying to set the border radius for that um, yeah so um, if you see me adding the color you see I have a color library there um, you can add you can add multiple color libraries but i like to use that of tailwind so you can find that by just going to the components library and then finding tailwind ink i think um and then you can just add that to your uh, your file and then you'll add the tailwind colors so you do not have to go select your your neutral colors it provides like all the tailwind libraries and then you can select the ones you want and delete the ones you don't want to keep so yeah um, so why you see me trying to create this out for I would end up deleting that because again I told you design is iterative. Um, I wanted to um, not follow the plan that I created, but um, I ended up changing it. You know. Um, so you see me creating the calendar bit. Um, so that's the heading for the section. Um, yeah. So basically trying to reuse what I've already created. I didn't want to create an new layout to convert in the input field into a button. Again, I tried to create everything and not use any external um, components I've created in a different file. And so you see me trying to create everything on the fly except for icons and images. Yeah, 
as well. You see me trying to align stuff, but then I realize ah, you need to design it like you're actually developing. So you see me change that. Um, try to embrace the box model in the design. Uh, I think when I started the design, I, have, I didn't capture that. I think when I started the design, I didn't capture that. And so I'll try to capture that. So you realize I was having issues with aligning the stuff, but then I do make the improvement and then you see that. Again, design is not straight, so it's not a straight size, you know, trying to keep everything uh, spaced out properly and all. So here you see me add um, a divider and I'll probably end up changing that because that is not how I should be doing it. So what I realized is I'm now making the uh, motor layout and then um, adding the padding to the left and right that allows me to control the um, padding on the left side and on the right side and it allows the system it allows it to be responsive and then behave like I want it to behave. So here I also add an auto layout to create um, a date picker. So yeah, adding a drop down making it obvious that's a date breaker um, yeah adding some space in between that so basically <laughs> trying to reuse what i've already created to create um, the toggle switches and so um, here i'm creating the toggle switch i'm creating the individual toggle switch then replicating and then using the same thing to created the active and inactive ones yeah so now I'll select everything and then make it inactive yeah so yeah that's basically how to do that I'm making it lighter to make it more obvious that they are not selected now taking the same button i've already created and the normal circumstance you would create a, um, a component library and then you can call on like different button types so this will most likely be like um, a secondary button or a tertiary button depending on how you want how you defined your design buttons but again not trying to use anything i've already created and so everything is being created on the fly within the project uh, within this video basically so yeah So you see me trying to make the three days rather the active one. And so um, because of the UI, um, the design direction, I just wanted to show um, three days. And showing a day wouldn't have been like the best, uh, wouldn't have looked like the best aesthetically. I mean, it would mean uh, using the day would show um, like the basically the breakdown of the entire day. But I thought breaking three days would make it look a little bit Will make it uh, more obvious in what uh, what I was trying to achieve basically. So yeah, that's why I did that switch. So now I'm creating the um, the day basically um, the day tab and then uh, setting them to fill. So when I resize, they can scale basically uh, in effort to make it responsive. So again, like <laughs> you need to make your design responsive. So in the in the situation of resizing. Um, you can resize things much easily and then it may it help the developers as well because if the developer sets uh, this to like um, how you call it flex um, they are able to uh, they are able to see how it's how it would respond basically so yeah so I see I referenced um, the file I'd already created to get um, the section for the um, basically capture the width of the uh, individual time periods basically so I just took the card and the box for what I wanted to do because um, I was having a bit of an issue doing dealing with that so here you see me trying to create the time card the, 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 the card that shows basically the times and i was having some difficulty i don't know 
so um, you see what I do with it um, it failed this failed um, really bad uh, it's trying to make it work but it didn't make sense even um, like thinking of it in terms of like the developer it didn't make a lot of sense uh, but you see how it feels um, so yeah um, I've been designing for over four years now and I still make mistakes like this so if you're starting out know that um, yeah even being at it for a little bit does not mean you're, um, you don't make mistakes you definitely would make mistakes and uh, uh, yeah so this is me trying to match the sizing but you realize yeah, this thing is not working yeah, Yeah, so you realize it's not working hard. I had to delete everything because I wasn't working the way I wanted it to work. So I just duplicated one of these ones, deleted the set top section, and then uh, place a text over there, align it to the top right. And then that worked amazingly for me. So basically, it took the same box that I was already working with because so it allows it to be responsive again. So yeah, now I uh, expose the dates, the times, the time periods align it the way I want to align it and uh, change the times to match what I want it to match. Another thing, uh, I see a lot of people do this mistake where it's not necessarily a mistake, it's like more of like an oversight where they create UIs using like dummy text and stuff like that. Uh, my mentor should taught me to try as much as possible to use realistic um, realistic input um, not would it be data or text try to make it as realistic as possible because it helps the developers um capture uh, what you need to do i've had issues with this in the past and um that was actually very good advice and i thought it would be great to share so yeah so you see me take slides breaks within the file um it's because uh, doing this in one take is mad um, yeah, so um, yeah, so now I sort of have a sense of how the structure should be. So now I think the next thing I'm going on to, to do now was um, capture the um, cards. So as you, you just saw, I just showed um, like what I'd already built, and basically capturing the text from there. So basically building the individual component that show time periods that you want to sell a schedule, like a scheduled meeting basically, how that looks like in the system. Um, so yeah, um, you see me looking for an icon for more. Uh, yeah. So again, this is uh, the VSAX, uh, I think, yeah, I think it's the VSAX icon library. If you want to add that, you can just go, I think if you look, if you look within Figma, you can find that uh, on the website or something. So um, here, I'm trying to create that. I was having issues with this, dealing with the layout sometimes as hell. But um, yeah, so you see me trying to make this thing work like I would want it to work, but this thing was not budging. It wasn't letting me, I think I worked, I reworked this like three times or four times. So. Yeah, um, so, so there's a lot of like control X. <laughs> Um, what command is it? Command X or command Z? I forgot what's undo. I know the shortcuts. I don't like I sometimes can't remember it for the life of me. So here I'm trying to create the time periods that I'd want um, the meeting is basically scheduled for. So here you see me trying to look for an icon to match the time period. And now I'm putting them in the same line. So yeah, then I'm putting a divider or like a static appeal. Yeah. Yeah. So here yeah, trying to make the final adjustments. And then mind you, going into this, I spent a couple of hours and like a proper chunk of time into this. Um, so, yeah, trying to make it like pop a little bit with some linear gradients, um, some um, gradients, but I think I ended up choosing like a radial gradients for it instead and gave it like a new, like a like nice oomph to it. Yeah. 
yeah and so that's basically how to do it yeah. thank you thank you for watching